Hey there, welcome to SynSeeker. My name's Luke. Today we are looking at uh, the Push 3. It arrived today. Uh, there's a, an ass load of videos on the Push 3 out there. Uh, and so the point of this video is basically I've owned this thing for uh, just a few hours, been through the setup, and uh, there's a fair number of bugs. <laughs> so, you know, that's pretty much par for the course for most technology uh, things that we get in the music space uh, these days. And so I thought I'd just make a quick video to share some of the bugs I'm finding uh, and how to work around them uh, if you can. And, uh, but overall, I'm very pleased with this device. Uh, and I know as, um, as Ableton continues to develop the software that's driving it, it's just going to get better. So let's talk about it. Uh, when it arrived, um, you know, there's a few things you should know right away if you've been using a push two or even a push one. Uh, the push three, the workflow and getting things done, I'm running it in standalone mode. Uh, I'm not using the computer at all. Things are slower. And I, and I don't mean there's been some comments about lag and things like that. That's not what I'm talking about. I haven't noticed that. I just mean... I never realized how much I used turning to the computer and fiddling around in Ableton, the app. I used that as a faster workaround than actually learning the Vulcan nerve pinch key combinations and workflow of the machine itself. I've, I've had a push since it came out um, and I love it, the original push and the push too. Um, but I really never thought about how much of a crutch the app is until I'm running this in standalone mode and I'm like forced to navigate through its browser and things like that. That said, it's been, it's nine o'clock at night. So I started banging around on this a little after four. Um, you know, so in those five hours, I am developing muscle memory. I'm getting much faster at dealing with uh, working through it. And I'm also running into a lot of the limitations and things that are not yet implemented uh, that should be in here. One example, um, in Ableton, the app, I'm used to be, uh, I'm, I'm used to being able to reorder tracks however I want. Um, you can't do that on the push. At least I haven't figured out how to do that, but you couldn't do it on the push too either. You can reorder devices easily enough um, from you know, holding keys down and then using the knob above it to um, holding the device button down and then using the knob above it to move it around in the chain. But you can't reorder tracks. And in digging around online, it looks like you could never reorder tracks on the push two even. Um, I may be wrong, and if you know of a way to do this, I'm sure there's a third party Max for Life thing that'll let you do it. But I've been, I just reach over to the computer and do it, and I can't anymore, which is a minor thing. It's no big deal. Um, but it would be a nice convenience and I'm sure that will come. Uh, but let's talk about setting it up and things that I've run into. These are snags that, uh, you may run into. Don't freak out everything you can work around. Okay. Um, so the machine itself, you are going to feel slower on it. When you first turn it on, it has to boot and it takes, you know, 30, 40 seconds and that's fine. You get used to that. Um, when you first go in, uh, before you start wiring everything up, just start it up in uh, standalone mode. It's going to want you to update its firmware. Uh, well, it's going to want you to connect to Wi-Fi. Um, that worked for me, no problem. I had no issues with Wi-Fi connections, although people online are saying, depending on what router you have, there may be some problems. Uh, I don't know. I haven't had that problem. Uh, but I put it on the Wi-Fi network, gave it the Wi-Fi password, it went out, it downloaded its firmware, uh, and then went to install it, and then crashed in the middle of the firmware update. Um, and I was very concerned. I'm like, oh shit, is this gonna brick my push three? But uh, the system, when I it essentially locked hard, I let it sit for an hour and it just, it wasn't progressing anywhere. Um, so I did a, held down the power button to force it to shut down restarted it and the UI came up and said a problem occurred during a firmware update. We've reverted you back to the original factory firmware. Click here to try again. Tried again, worked fine. Okay, so there's something in there that needs a little polishing, 
but it worked. Okay, so if you if it locks up during the firmware update, don't panic. It seems to be able to correct itself, or at least in my case, it was able to correct itself and then went forward. Then in activation, you, it's got to, you've got to authorize the push. So it wants you to make sure you're at the current firmware. It wants you to make sure you are on the Wi-Fi. Oh, and by the way, you can actually connect an, a USB-A to Ethernet adapter on this, and it will talk to the Internet over Ethernet. You don't have to use Wi-Fi. Um, they sure want you to use Wi-Fi, but their own documentation has been updated in the last 24 or 48 hours, and it says that you can use an Ethernet adapter, which I do not own currently, but I may go get one. So anyway, so it goes out, it updates its firmware, life is good. Then it wants you to authorize, right? And in authorization, what it does is it basically preps the push on your local network and start, sort of sets, starts a little server running that it asks you to go on your phone or in a browser to the push itself. It gives you the address of the push on your network. You go there and it asks you to authorize uh, by entering a number. To, to, um, it'll display a number. You type it in. It goes to the Ableton website and then authorizes your license because by default, the push comes with Ableton Live intro, I think, or light. I don't know which one or the other, but um, I've got sweet. I have two licenses. I have a license for a live light and a live sweet. Um, and it went to the website and it picked, I'm assuming it's going to pick the highest um, capability license that I have because it did not allow me to choose which license I wanted. Their, their instructions say that it'll show you a dialogue that says, you have more than one live license. Which license do you want to use? And you can pick, you know, whatever version of live you have. In my case, I do have two versions, but it blazed past there in the browser and automatically chose sweet. Now, after it said it was done, um, you do have to power cycle the push before it recognizes that you've got sweet. And that wasn't clear in here. So I'm just like looking at the info box on the, on the push uh, here and uh, go to settings, go to status, uh, excuse me, software. And it was saying Ableton Live, this says Ableton Live 11 Suite right now, but it, it had said Ableton Live light. Um, and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't clear that you had to power cycle it before it would change that setting. Uh, so heads up there. Don't panic. Don't freak out. Uh, it's available to you. Um, all right. So what other bugs am I running into? I'm going to get to the good stuff. Don't worry. I still, I love this thing. It is great. Okay. And it's not because I paid two grand for it. It's not me avoiding buyer's remorse. I love the push two. The push three is even better, especially if you're a player, right? <laughs> This, these pads feel freaking amazing, but I'll get to that in a minute. Let's talk about a couple other bugs. Installing packs, okay? If you've got Ableton packs and you want to go install them, uh, it's the same process that you would use in Ableton in that it'll show you a list of available packs, and you could click on them and say, download, 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 and it, they will all download as a, in the background, okay? People were saying you have to do them one at a time. It's actually exactly like Ableton Live on the desktop uh, in that you can download them all and they'll run in parallel. And then once they're downloaded, the download indicator turns into an install and you can only install one at a time. And that's exactly the same as it is in Live. There is no batch install all my packs command. It would be really nice, especially here to have it. And I'm sure Ableton may cook up a way to do that. But for now, you can install, you can download them all in parallel, but you do have to install them all in serial. And the install progress indicator reminds me of like old Windows, old Windows progress indicators in that it has um, the percentage it shows and, uh, and the amount of time it spent getting to that percentage has no bearing on what the remaining percentage in time is going to take. Because it goes like from zero to 50%, it flies and then sort of slows down as it approaches 50 and then sits there and ticks 50, 51, 
52 really slowly and then jumps to 75 and then it's done. <laughs> That's the pattern I see. So don't panic. Um, and also there's a cancel option during um, when you're downloading and uh, choosing to install packs. So if you, you know, you don't have time, you got a slow internet connection, you can cancel it and come back later. Uh, it's not a big deal. And I did have one pack fail during installation um, where it downloaded it, went to install, and then the machine actually did hang for 30 minutes. Now, and it wasn't a very large pack. Uh, it was, you know, not a lot of samples. It was a Max for Live pack. I don't remember which one, but it did basically just lock up on the progress indicator. Uh, and I power cycled the push, brought it back up, tried to install it again. It worked fine. So again, there's some bugs. They're going to have to iron those out. Um, and I know I'm going to be putting in, you know, bug reports for this. You could consider this video a bug report, although not really, because I'm not showing you how to reproduce the problem. But I'm going to go be a good bunny and do that. Uh, and I encourage you to do the same thing, because it's just going to get better if more people explain how they got to the point where it broke. Um, anyway, uh, other than that, let's see what else is going on. Oh, yeah, the available packs option the like the ability to go to packs so if i hit uh, enter a new device create a new device or new track okay there's this packs option if i say go to packs my available packs normally this is the listing of all the packs i have installed but there's usually another bucket at the beginning of this list that says available packs and if we click into that it goes out to the net to ableton gets the list of all the packs i have licenses for it disappears it like it went away so, and when I power cycle the push, it's there. But if I load a project or change my, or save my project, it goes away. So whatever process they've got running in the background here, that's like monitoring this, what available packs you have, that process dies. <laughs> okay. So that's going in a bug report too. But as you can see, I've got an ass load of packs installed. Um, I'm happy with that. It's, it's been pretty good. And honestly, packs are like presets, you know, um, some people love them and some people don't use them at all, right? All the devices are there. So you could just go do your own sound design. You don't need the packs. I was just grabbing some of them to, uh, sort of explore. I was curious which, some of the packs I have are really old, like, like Ableton Live 9. Um, and so I'm curious if they're going to work or not. We'll see. So far, everything's been pretty good. All right. That's all the snags and things I ran into. Let's talk about, uh, let's talk about the device itself. All right. I'm not going to go through a rundown. You, you know, all the specs and things like that. Uh, if you've been on my channel and all, you know, I like to play the grids. Um, and so this is my take on what this grid is like. All right. Uh, grid material is different. Okay. Uh, it doesn't feel like a push. Um, doesn't feel like the push two is my most recent. It does not feel like a Launchpad Pro. I have uh, several Launchpad Pro. I've got a Mark III. I've got a, the Launchpad X um, and I've got the Mini. It's close, but it's not the same material. This material feels silky. Um, it's got some drag on it. So as you're sliding across it, you can feel that. It's not like sliding across your phone or a piece of glass. It's textured. Um, and it has a very smooth feel. Uh, it is, I want to say the pads feel thinner than on the Push 2 in that there's less sort of squish in there. Let me go to a, there's an MPE sound. I'll get to the MPE stuff in a minute, but the pads are way more sensitive and yes, you can go change the sensitivity, but the default, you can go change the sensitivity, but the default sensitivity is much, much lighter. And I find it has a much better velocity sensitivity than on the push to, uh, what's going to happen is you're going to need to learn to play this grid. Uh, it's a li it's, it's because it's so much lighter. And you could, you know, crank the settings so that it's harder. But honestly, for um, 
like if you talk to any guitar player, uh, you know, when you're holding the neck of a guitar, if you crush it, if you're like, you know, squeezed really hard, pressing down on those frets really hard, that's fine. It's perfectly valid. People play that way all the time. But like the virtuosos and the people who really have nuanced styles, you know, they've got their action so low and they use lighter strings and they are just breathing on those frets, those strings and frets when they're playing them. And it allows them once they're competent with it to have a precision and speed that is really amazing for some people, right? Your, your mileage may vary. This is going to be the grid to learn to be gentle with. I'm not mashing these buttons, right? I'm not mashing the pads. If you've you know played aftertouch on a keyboard, some keyboards the the aftertouch you really got to press into it. You don't have to on these, right? The slide has got a nice a nice drag sort of feel, and then as far as the pressure, right? I'm not moving my not moving my finger on the pad, I'm pressing further. It's really, really smooth and nuanced. You know, if you worry about like, you know, the MIDI zipper effect, you know, where you can hear the different levels as it's going, as it's going up the curve, I'm not hearing it, right? They're doing some kind of normalization in there. It sounds really good. Um, so you're going to need to learn to play this, but it feels really good. Very sexy. Um, so yeah um i'm sold i'm super just on the new pads alone i would i would buy this thing absolutely um and really um that's all i've explored oh uh adat so uh i've got um I, i've got my hardware synths are coming in to an interface that's feeding into the push via ADAT. All right. Uh, at least with my interface, and I'm using a Motu Ultralight AVB for this particular case. That's what's coming into the push. When I connected it so that the ADAT out from the Ultralight was coming into the ADAT in on the push, it was working, uh, but I was getting a little tick every so often this little digital click periodically when i was sustaining a note um, and what that came down to was i needed to tell the uh, adat uh, interface to use the push as the leader as the master all right where it follows the pushes sync for the adat audio um, as soon as i did that it went away okay but what that meant is that i actually had to send uh, both the ADAT from the interface into the push and ADAT from the push over to the interface. Now that may change based on what interface you're using. I've got, uh, like I said, this ultralight AVB from Motu. It's, it's old. It's easily 10 years old. Um, maybe the newer ones will be able to just do a single one way and then send the other one somewhere else. But for me, if you're experiencing, if you're using ADAT inputs and experiencing a little digital noise periodically, this it's like when you'd sustain a note, you heard this tick, tick, tick almost like someone hitting an 808 hi-hat periodically. Um, make it so that the push is the sync master, the sync leader on the thing there. All right. um, and really that's about it. I haven't explored a lot. I'm, I just was working through all of that. I was validating that I could get my hardware in, so I totally have that working. I've got a Nord, a PPG, and a Summit all coming in through the ADAT in here. It sounds great. Um, and then I'm feeding the audio outs over to a different interface that's feeding uh, the recording device that's recording all this. So, yeah, 
you're you're going to learn to play a lot lighter is basically my my takeaway on this grid it's it's got way more precision but you're going to learn to play more um with more nuance uh so at least i am and i'm i'm loving it really that's about it i'm spooging all over the place here so um there are some problems with the software they're going to work it out i have no doubt um, everything that I've run into, I've been able to work through for the most part, not being able to reorder tracks. I know you can't do it on the push two, So why should you be able to do it on the push three? Um, uh, if I'm in standalone mode, I need to be able to reorder tracks. <laughs> so, Hey, Ableton, please. Um, y- you know, it's con- reordering a device is as simple as holding down this and it says, choose the new position. And then you, you turn the knob to, you know, change where it's going to go. If I could do the same thing, if I could hold down that device and, you know, turn a knob to change its position right now when you hold down it uh, changes the record mode that it's doing which is also something you need to do so i know i know we'll figure it out uh anyway that's about it i'm going to explore this thing in the evenings this week and then uh, i've got some vacation coming up i sense um i sense some wood shedding happening with this thing if i run into more bugs i'll make more videos to share it um as long as i've got a workaround um you know and uh and really that's about it okay so hey Thanks for spending some time. Uh, you have been watching Sin Seeker <laughs> drooling and being emotional about his new push, both some of the annoying bugs and God, these pads. <laughs> oh, one, one, sorry, more stuff. One final thing: the new the uh, the new touch strip is way better. Um, if, as far as like way better tracking uh, than on the old one so anyway all right now i'm out see ya